This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. Then cross out your eyes. This is one of the reasons why I love doing this show. You know, Heather B, we could accomplish on this show things I can't necessarily accomplish on MTV. Talk about why. Okay, because there's no filter and there's no limitation on what we can talk about that's related to music and who we can have on this show. Absolutely. And I often tell the story. Tell it. Of my favorite group of all time. You do. Because I grew up when I was a child of the 70s and my mother used to have parties. People didn't go to the clubs necessarily. They partied at home. In the basement. Yeah, my grandparents would party with the with my mother and my aunties and my uncles. And when they used to send us to bed, they used to send us to bed to, with the soundtrack of life. Mm. And that soundtrack that played on repeat mm. on the turntables. It wasn't on, you know, you didn't press a button. Mm -mm. You know, they, they put vinyl on the turntables was the group that's here with us today, Earth, Wind, and Fire, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. <laughs> salute, salute, whoa, salute. Whoa, whoa. Man, that intro, man. that intro. Nah, I could Great. do better than that, nah, Ralph. Ah, that a, intro. You know, I could do better than that, man. Thank well, you. how are you? Thank What's going on? I'm Thank doing you. well. Uh, every time we see each other, it's like at some... Some awards. Some awards show. Class right. party or right. the Grammys or the red carpet. Yeah, you hear that, Heather. Oh, yeah, we hang out. Yeah. We hang out at exactly. Fancy. So fancy. fabulous. Clive, right? meaning Clive Davis. Clive Davis. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, y'all. I know his first name. I know the first name. Sorry. Sorry. And it's always... You know, I look at you guys and I always say, hey, man, we, we do quick interviews on the red carpet, but mm -hmm. I'll be wanting to tell you how much your music impacted my life personally. And I'm sure you hear these stories all the time. But, um, man, you're, you you know, I, I one of the things I, I told Philip when he came by here, yeah. one of the things I really love about your music is how it transcends generations because it's classic. And you made songs. um at those times that you can apply to these times. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it classic. Mm -hmm. And so the same music that I uh, write a song or fantasy mm -hmm. or the same music that I went to sleep to as a child, mm -hmm. I was able to put my 16 year old daughter to sleep with mm -hmm. as a child, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I, I want to thank y'all for that, yeah. oh, okay. you know. Well, oh. and we and we have to thank Maurice. Yeah, we sure okay. certainly do. Yeah, we have the, the founder and the leader who who came up with the idea of Earth, Wind, and Fire and uh, trying to put a band together that did all types of music and, and can play for all different types of audiences. Because yeah. one of the things that's going on today, and Ralph is a witness, and because we're out there every night, you know, we have a lot of teenagers, we have a lot of young people that come, and, mm -hmm. and where we are now, you know, a lot of the teenagers they want selfies, you know, <laughs> and, they, and you know, and and you know, and you know, they're keeping us up on technology. And I told Ralph, I said, "What's a selfie? I'm still trying to get my MySpace thing together." Yeah, right, here. right. <laughs> Verdine, Verdine, Verdine likes to tell people we have everybody from eight tracks to iPods. Mm. Yeah, mm. And, and that's and this is true. Verdine White, Ralph Johnson, they hit Verdine. Um, so, what do you think of technology? Are you guys tweeting? And oh yeah, we oh. do. Oh yeah, yeah. Our, our, way our, in our, our social networking, our set. We have a lot of young people. Uh, Tashawn does our social networking. We have young people in the office. Ty, we have Ron. We have. We said we wanted to be only the oldest cats in the organization, you know, <laughs> and uh, because you know we're you know, and also to, it opens up doors for young people yeah. to give them opportunity to grow within this business, you know, the way we started because we started you know eighteen, nineteen years old, mm. you know, we started together and and uh, we've been doing this and we've seen don't you know we've seen a lot of culture changes, techno technological changes, mm -hmm. but we always try to embrace the technology. I mean, yeah. You know, we're in the studio using Pro Tools and whatever we can do to enhance what we do yeah. to give you the great music, then that's what we'll do. You know, you guys wrote music that reflected the times, mm. too. You yeah. know, right. Um, if it was the 70s, fresh off the civil rights movement and, you know, it's about celebration and black empowerment or just empowerment in general. On um, the 80s, people were, you know, benefiting a lot. Uh, from the the groundwork that mm -hmm. was laid in the mm -hmm. 60s and 70s right. and even into the 90s and even to, into now. When you listen to music today, do you feel like it, it serves, that it gives that same purpose at all? Not all of it. Yeah. But I would say some of it. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I hear some things lyrically sometimes that I find a bit, you know, disturbing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, so to answer your question, not all of it, you know, some, not all of <clears throat> music is going to be edifying for all people. Yeah. You know, so... To answer your question, and I, and I think 
what's going on in music today, I think music is a regrouping. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we went through a period for a while that, that we weren't using music for, for social change and mm-hmm. cultural change. I think now this generation, you know, uh, they're growing up, they're uh, uh, checking out what's going on, you know, uh, in culture today, what's going on. Uh, and I think they're starting to be aware of it now. Now they're starting to say, oh, that's what music should be used for. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, this generation, you know. Uh, speaking of this generation, we got a generational thing going on right now when you look at Verdine because his, his hairstyle is, the to- <laughs> is famous. Yes, yeah. it is. You know, Verdine is rocking, the, is that a perm, is that a press, or what, what is that? Verdine? Actually, actually, you know, to be honest, I can still wear a fro if I want to. Yeah. Hey, okay. Wow. Yes, okay. I can. I can wear a fro if I really want to. You know. Don't uh, make Don't make you go there. I don't make me go there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, but let me let me see. But Dick, but Dick, you should only wear a fro and platform shoes one time in your life. You okay. Know what I'm talking okay. About? And yeah. so we're past that period we're, 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 now, we're aren't we? Yes, Except yeah. at Halloween parties. You know? Okay. Right. All right, Tracy, can you come stand over here real quick? Uh, okay. Here here's the new version of it. Uh oh. All right. And uh, <laughs> if you look at their hair. Uh oh. Come over here, baby. You know. Hey, Tracy. Look at Tracy. That's Tracy. Tracy G. Uh, Tracy G. Yep. Tracy G. And, 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 and see, so y'all kind of doing yeah. the same thing, but he may be doing it a little. Tracy looks great, but he may be doing it a little better. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> His edges is laid. That I, that now, now I'm in. Tra- I'm in trouble with Tracy. Now, <laughs> okay. Right. 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 right, right. Yeah. No, no. Tracy look good. You look good. She look good. Any tips for her? Everything. Well, just keep looking like you're looking. Keep doing okay, what you're doing. That's easy. Don't stop. She looks, she looks, don't, okay. don't stop what you're doing. Drink, you, hey, drink the green tea. She looks fantastic. Say your <laughs> prayers and take your vitamins. You'll be okay. <laughs> Bam. Okay. Bam. Right, there it is. <laughs> there you go. Thanks. Earth, Wind, and Fire yeah, have go. they have a new album aptly titled Holiday, mm-hmm. um, and this is a, a holiday album, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, our first Christmas album ever mm-hmm. in 43 years that we've been doing this. We mm-hmm. finally got around to doing a Christmas record okay. produced by Philip Bailey. Oh, Philip produced the entire mm-hmm. album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, and Myron McKinley, a, a co-producer of uh-huh. uh, the record. And uh, what happened originally? Sony Records came to us the night the, the night of the we Grammys. We were hanging out the after Grammys. the Grammys. Okay. We don't we don't we don't need to be na- uh, mean to be name dropping, but that's you know where we go. I'm listening to all but of that's what, hate. But that's how it went down. I love it. Uh, uh, and uh, Adam Block, the president of Sony Legacy, asked us to record a uh, Christmas CD, and so we went in. Pretty fast, actually. Yeah, right? we uh, jumped right on. Jump right, February, March, yeah, and just started picking songs and going through different songs, and and um, and it, it turned out to be a really nice project. It sounds like you know, just Earth, Wind, and Fire just started jamming, doing mm-hmm. Christmas songs. Well, yeah. I want to play know, one, one, one of those. I'm sorry, I apologize. I want to play one of the songs from the album. Okay, okay. If we can. What you got? What you got? I'm gonna go little the little drummer boy. Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. One of my right. favorites. Right. Earth, Wind, and Fire is here. Eight 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 seven four two three three four five. The Little Drummer Boy, that's off the Holiday album, Earth, Wind, and Fire. You can get that album now. Matter of fact, you need to get it right now today as we head into the holiday season. This sounds like the perfect thing to play during Thanksgiving dinner. Nice. Right. You know, in between Thanksgiving and, uh, and Christmas and Kwanzaa or Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate. Right. Uh, right. All the way into the new year. and. You know, you want that right energy during the holiday season. People are kind of, you know, it's funny, it's polarized in the holiday season. You either really joyful or a mm-hmm. lot of people are really. Well, you're just not into it. You're right? not <laughs> into it, right? So sometimes you need music to carry you along. Mm. You know, and uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire, man. You know, Rich Nice is here, a good friend of mine who's a producer too. And when I told hey, him he would come, and he would he wanted to I come down because he want to steal some of your secrets because <laughs> <laughs> your horn sections were. Like the best in the business. Yeah, the, a lot of those arrangements uh, were written by the late Charles Stepney mm-hmm. and uh, Tom Tom eighty four and Jerry Hay and uh, really a lot of those ideas. Bill Myers. Bill, Bill, Bill Myers. That's right, Billy yeah. Myers. And uh, so we were fortunate to be able to put those kind of uh, uh, arrangements together, you know. And of course, you know, uh, you know, we restarted that concept and we have followed suit, you know, and and uh, tried to keep the sound uh, make it sound like like Earth Wind and Fire, you know. Right. What was the writing process like? Because it's it's a huge amount of guys in the studio, <clears throat> unlike today where it's maybe one or two guys behind, you know, a digital machine. It's, you know, eight, eight nine, ten guys in a room. And and how, how were those writing sessions? What was the process? Back in the day uh, when Al McKay was playing guitar, a lot of those grooves started with Al just striking up a rhythm on the guitar. And everybody else would just kind of fall in. And uh, we looked up and there was a track. So the process is different for everyone. 
you know, depending on what what resources you have that you're working with. Uh, myself, I'm a Pro Tools person, so I'll jump right on Pro Tools, and, you know, put in the drum beat, and we get, you know, bass and piano, start building. But for us, back in the day, it was about, you know, sitting in a room and just striking up a groove. Sometimes things we would play at sound check would turn out to be records. Wow. That's interesting. Right, exactly. Exactly. Something that you um, mentioned, Virgin, that I thought was really awesome is how you kind of provide the youth with a ladder so they can climb up the ranks in the entertainment industry of your company. Right. And um, I find that a lot of times people use perception to propel their brand forward where they never really want to humanize themselves and mention their mistakes mm -hmm. that they were able to overcome. So I'm wondering, with you guys having such a long career, are you guys okay with sharing just some of the stumbles that happened along the way that really like kind of left a dent? Oh yeah, well, well, the, this is 2015. Uh, I think the rough part for EWF was in the 80s, I think, uh, middle 80s. Well, yeah, definitely the 80s, and then again, the early 90s. Right? Early 90s. That's right. Because what, yeah, what happened? Well, uh, first of all, you know, we disbanded for three years, mm -hmm. then we got back together, and then we got back together in another era. You know, yeah. uh, you know, hip hop had come in, rap had come in, and and our message seemed to be passe at that time. Kind of out of touch. Uh, out of touch, and we were out of touch. You know, we we had left the scene, and and uh, but we stayed at it. You know, we. Uh, went back out there, and we and we went back out there small. We didn't go, uh, you know. Yeah. What we what you're seeing now, we didn't didn't start like this, you know. Back here, you know, one thing led to another, one thing led to another, and then we grew, uh, sound wise. We uh, uh, we travel and we stayed on the road, so we saw firsthand what people were were doing and what they were believing in. And then uh, one thing happened after another: the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, oh. BET Lifetime Achievement Award. Oh, yes. <laughs> You, you know, so it allowed us to turn the page and keep growing. And, uh -huh. and, and then what happened, we would start to have uh, uh, younger people to come work with us to show us different ideas, where the world was going. And, and uh, so we were, we were very fortunate that they, they came with us and, and worked with us. There, there, I want to add to that. The real bomb was mm. dropped in 94 when Maurice woke up one day and said, hey, guys, I'm no longer touring. Right, yeah. right because of his Parkinson's. That's right. Yeah, so that's right. now here are the three of us. We got to now figure out how we're going to do this without Maurice. Mm -hmm. The big question was, would the public accept Earth, Wind, and Fire without Maurice? Yeah. So in the fall of 94, we put a quick six-week tour together, took it out there. People showed up. So that let us know we could still do this. And so here we are, 2014, the end of 2014, going wow. into 15. And as it turns out, we've been on the road longer without Maurice than we were with him back in the day. Wow. Yeah, wow. and what happened was uh, uh, a lot of the the uh, producers for movies started to, wanting to use our songs mm -hmm. in the movies. So, you know, tunes like Fantasy and September. Uh, Boogie we, Wonderland. Boogie Wonderland. Uh, we ran into John Travolta one time, and uh, he said, I love the band. And so what happened, he ended up putting Fantasy in, in to get shorty. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so the younger people... Uh, learned a lot about us through the through films and through yeah. th that they didn't even know, mm -hmm. you, you know? know. And then their parents started telling them, you know, about yeah. us, you know, which was probably the main marketing tool for us right. in terms of getting the kids mm -hmm. out. Their parents telling, you know, their kids and and, and sometimes their grandkids uh, about us and what it was like seeing our show. And so we look up and there's a bunch of young people sitting in the audience. Yeah. And then what happened? Because you know, you know, young people are, well, why I want to go see them? You know, what's the big deal? And then when they go, they say, oh, that's the big deal. <laughs> that's you know, the big deal. That's the big deal. So, <laughs> and, and, and what it did, it brought families together. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. it brought yeah. families together. Because it is a family show. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it really is it's for the whole family. Yeah. You know, it's a very mu musical, very entertaining show. A lot of energy coming off the stage. Y'all be jamming, man. Mm -hmm. you, you know, anybody can come out two years old or 200 and you're going to party. Uh, Verdine is here. Ralph is here. And uh, one of the points you made when hip-hop became uh, the prominent um, genre of music kind of driving the music business, I don't know if you realize it, but hip-hop adapted a lot of Earth, Wind & Fire music too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to play some songs for you and, and see if you ever heard these songs where they <laughs> actually sampled Earth, Wind & Fire okay. and went on to make big hits. Okay. All right, All right here's the first one right here. Yo, Jinx, man, we gotta find somebody that's down for hers, man. All these girls sipping, man. Who you think fit the category? It's me, the brand new intelligent right. black woman. Yeah. Why, well, that oh, would be devotion. Oh, right, yep. devotion, that's right. Yo, yo. That's right, yo, yo, bro. Right. Did that. Let's let this rock out a little bit. Devotion. Uh, well, there's one for you. You know what I was gonna say? Um, because of sampling, uh, 
and Ralph can attest to this, it made a lot of the younger people learn who we were. Yeah. So when we started, you know, going back out on tour and, and playing, we would we would break these songs out. Especially mm. when they got to clap your hands this see what right. yes. right. yes. yes. and, and then it was oh I didn't know they did that song. See, we were we were dealing with that. So a lot of them, you know, uh, uh sampling really brought us to the, the younger generation. Mm. Yeah. You know, you know. There was another song by this artist named Queen Pen. And she sampled one of your songs. Mm-hmm. Her song was called "Party Ain't a Party." Go ahead, Lark Clifton. Oh yeah, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. hey. yeah. You remember this, right? Right. right. Hey. On your face. On your face. Yeah. 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 Yo, I got the original. Oh, yeah, yeah, put that on there. Yeah, yeah, put the original on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what you doing, Mark? What's going on? Do I have the original? Yeah, put the original up there. There it is. There we go. Hey. We got we to gotta give our hats off to Brother Maurice because yeah. uh, those songs that he wrote were really about all of us. You know what I mean? What, mm-hmm. You know, what we've all, you know, just as human beings, you know, devotion on your face, mm-hmm. spirit, all those songs, you know. You know, <laughs> Maurice was a very driven man because, um, if you uh, go to Sony right now, there's a CD pack called the Columbia Masters, which is 16 CDs on Earth, Wind, and Fire. Uh-huh. Mm. So this is everything we ever did for Columbia. And I had to take a look at it and go, man, we wow. turned out a lot of music. music. Yeah, man. But I also let you know how driven Maurice was as yeah. a producer and uh-huh. a writer. Yeah, he sure was, and he you was know. he was uh, and he was dedicated, you know, to to really good music, you know, mm-hmm. you know, following in the great traditions of a John Coltrane and Miles Davis and and all that good music that, that had come before we even came on the set, you know. Wow. And uh, so, and that's really what, and you know, and it sounds just as fresh today as it did when we oh, when, when, we, when we cut when we cut it. You know? and, and one of the things I like that you guys are doing right now is you walk us through the history, mm-hmm. you paying homage to Maurice and and those who contributed to your success. Something I often argue that we don't do enough in hip hop. We mm-hmm. don't talk about the past mm-hmm. or those who helped lay the foundation for us to do what we do. And so we can learn from um, this conversation that we're having with you guys, Verdeen. So I appreciate that you guys are saying these things. We got some people on the phone lines. Okay. Uh, All right. Cool. Uh, Heather B. want to ask you a quick question. Yeah, really quickly. I remember mm-hmm. being in the eighth grade and my teacher asking me, what's your favorite song in the world right now? Miss Paula Phillips asked that. And I said, Reasons mm-hmm. by Earth, Wind, and Fire. And she said, how do you know that? And as a testimony to what Sway said, I said, my father, he Mm. plays this music all the time. When you say that a lot of the songs were based on personal life, which one of you guys' personal lives were that written about? Well, it wasn't mine. (laughs) (laughs) And it wasn't mine. It wasn't mine because I was flying through the air with the bass, so it wasn't mine. Yeah, right. I was spinning the drum (laughs) set, so so it it wasn't mine. mine. (laughs) Nobody's taking... (laughs) Well, I didn't write the lyrics. No, no, we're going to take the fifth on that. Yeah, we're going to stand. Matter of fact, I'm going to take the 555th fifth on the fifth. Okay. Somebody right. was cheating on somebody. somebody. Was right. uh, <laughs> with, with me. But the little backstory of this song, uh, we did two versions of it. We did one version on the That's the Way of the World uh, album. Album, right. And, oh, right. Uh, and then the we did the live version, version on, on, Gratitude. on Gratitude, which uh-huh. was the version that blew up. Uh-huh. Which, right. Now, it was never a single. It wasn't. Wow. As wow. popular as this tune exactly. is, it was never a single. Now, back in the day, yeah. which you all don't have today, uh, uh, disc jockeys and radio personalities would have the A side and the B side. And like today, you know, you have the A-side record companies won't let you turn it over or they don't, they don't do that anymore. But this jock turned it over on the B-side. Mm. And it became one of the biggest records we've ever did, one of the biggest records in the history of radio. Wow. And I have a great A-side, B-side story, not related to Earth, Wind & Fire, but related to Sly Stone. Uh-huh. Uh, sing a Simple Song. Remember Sing yeah, a Simple mm-hmm. Song? Simple, yeah. Okay. Uh, that was actually a B-side. That was a B side because everyday people was the A side. Uh huh. Wow. And this was the B side. Did he oh, break? Let's, let's, Whoa, let's let it rock. Quick. Let's let it rock. Let it rock. Ah wow! Wow! I throw my party up. Felt <laughs> 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 like a wow. wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, we're going to go to Indiana. We got uh, Anthony on the line. Good morning. Say hello to Earth, Wind, and Fire, Anthony. Hey, what's up? What's up? You living icon legends. Hey, Anthony. How you doing? How are you, brother? How are you? How are you, man? Hey, just want to say, hey, it's nice to know great music is still out there. You guys doing your thing. I grew up on you guys. I'm 47. Hey, a lot of great weekends. I can remember being a kid. My parents with the card games and just kicking back. 
All yeah, right, man. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for your call, and we're going to go to Kentucky. And, and by the way, you get the holiday album now. Matter of fact, everybody should order Earth, Wind, and Fire holidays, uh, holiday album. My mm-hmm. um, and Leroy is in Kentucky. Hey, hey Leroy. Hey, what's going Leroy, on? Leroy, what's up? What's up, brother? Hey, not much. Way. I just want to take my hat off to you. I love what y'all doing on K45. Uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh, my God. Man. I can remember y'all. The only thing we played back in the day was wow. uh, down in the basement was Earth, Wind, and Fire. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. We were doing back then. But I take my hat off to y'all. Thank and you. And y'all keep doing what y'all doing. All right. Thank, Thank you, Hey, man, so Leroy, you a citizen. Nice. A sway in the morning. All right. We're going uh, to go to New Mexico. Damon, what up, man? How you doing? Uh, good morning. I'm doing well. I just want to say I grew up idolizing you guys. My father uh, emulated you, and I fell in love with you. And I actually had the chance to see you perform. Never thought I would, but August, uh, this August, you performed in Vegas at my company's function. Oh, wow. And, uh, right. Yeah. It, yeah. Right. And what, this is even the funniest part. I was coming out my hotel room, and mm-hmm. Mr. Verdine was getting room service delivered. And I turned around and looked, and I saw the hair. I said, oh, my God, that's him. Uh, so, uh, I, wanted, I wanted to knock on your door and ask for your autograph, but I had to remind myself, okay, he's already performed. He's having dinner. Let him have his private space. But oh, I thank really, you for You that. did the right I, thing. <laughs> <laughs> I brag about that. I tell my friends, Mr. Verdine's room was right across from mine in the hotel. Whoa, 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 we're at the, the memory. Was that the Wynn? Was that the Wynn? We were, we were the Wynn? No, this was at the Venetian. The Venetian. Ah, the Venetian, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Hey, Damon, thanks for calling, man. You're a citizen. Let's wait in the morning. Uh, man, I want to thank y'all for coming by, man. Thank you for having us, you know. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah. we want to thank all the fans and everybody that's that's been uh, with us for all these years because, you know, you know, everybody, you know, they sing our praises and things like that. But this is not an easy thing to do to be here after all these. And it, yeah. first of all, this comes from the grace of God. So we, we, have to, we have to give all praise to him and, Amen. and uh, for our health and for our, our, our mind and our sanity mm. and the gift that we're given mm. to do his work on this earth. Mm. And, uh, and we want to thank the fans and everybody and Ralph and us. we've been together. For, since since we, were, we were what 20, 20, 21, 21, 21 yeah. Wow. yeah, that's man. great, man. Yeah. Hey, man, that's what a career is all about, man. Mm-hmm. Amen, man. Hey, I'm finally glad. I'm glad to have y'all on the show finally. Yeah. So when I see you on the red carpet now, we're like, yeah, ah, yeah. exactly, yeah. Right. Right. exactly. Right. Right. Thanks for having us, and we and we watched your work for a long time with MTV. We watched Absolutely. your interviews with the president. We watched. You saw that? Hey. Oh, I saw now. that. I, 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 we, we be watching. Okay. We watch. We watch. Thank you, thank you, man. Hey, but I'm as excited about interviewing y'all as the president. Okay, you. Not sure he would be too. Uh, Verdine White, uh, Ralph Johnson, Earth, Wind, and Fire. The album is called Holiday. Uh, I got to play this for you because in the world of comedy and film, you have a gigantic fan by the name of Craig Robinson. Oh, comedian. Yeah, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, Craig, Craig, Robinson. Yeah. Craig, Craig, Craig came by here one morning and he couldn't get you guys off his mind. <laughs> Craig, and, Craig, And, Craig. and so he did a tribute to you. Oh. And I want to play this on your way out. Okay, okay. okay. All right. Okay. It's Sway in the morning. Only on Shea 45.